My plan for today's show is exceedingly straight ahead. How to be a happier, maybe let's say more contented audiophile. Not, let's say, a better audiophile. That has, that has connotations. No, how to be a happier, more contented audiophile. That's what I want to try to convey, you know, how to do that today. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I have this friend, Joe. He kind of inspired this episode because he's really happy. He's very, he's very chill kind of guy. He loves his system. He loves the sound of his system. Yes, he is an audiophile, but he really loves music. We're always swapping music suggestions back and forth. And anyway, I've known him a few years, not a long, super long time. And when I met him, his system was, eh, wasn't that great really, but he, he was the same way. He loved music. He loved the sound of his system, even it was a pretty humble system. Didn't matter. And I don't think that his, now that his system's much better than it was before, I don't detect a difference in his satisfaction with the sound of his system. And that's the key. That's the key to everything I'm going to tell you today is how to be satisfied. Maybe that's even better than, ha than happy. How to be a satisfied audiophile. So you're not chasing sound. You're not chasing buying the better thing. No, that should not be part of your everyday life as an audiophile. No. I mean, to me, the most, the most amazing thing that can happen to any audiophile, other than to be a contented audiophile, is that your, your, your musical horizons are getting larger and larger. You're not stuck in a groove. You're always looking for new music, new music by musicians that you liked or bands that you've liked forever. There's, there may be more stuff out there or just entirely new genres of music. It's all possible. And maybe even the ultimate is that if you're not any kind of musician already, that maybe you start to learn how to play an instrument. That would be the cherry on top. <laughs> but today's show is how to be a happy audiophile. Now, there's two, there's at least two ways to approach this. But first I want to say is it's the relaxing part. It's not stressing yourself out. Stop pushing yourself. I got to do this. I got to get a, no, don't just, every time that starts to enter your, your noggin there, pull back, think pleasant thoughts. Think about the next piece of music you want to play and what that should be. Maybe you got to, yeah, put, you know, put your energies into getting more out of your music. To whatever degree, you can change things up. And by this, I mean, um, let's say, listen in the dark. If you don't ordinarily listen in the dark, yeah, when I say dark, I mean turn off as many lights as possible as long as it's safe. Just do that. Listen in the dark. Or maybe turn around. Have your back face the speakers so you're not looking at the speakers, which is accomplished by turning, turning off the lights. Yeah, all those things. Or maybe if it's uh, acceptable, listen in the nude. That may change it. And by the way, if you wear glasses, take your glasses off. Yeah, I usually have my glasses off when I'm listening by myself at home because I, I just want to change things up and I want the music to really reach me. Hopefully, every time I play, even familiar music, I'm hearing something that, I, wow, I never noticed that before. When that happens, that is the best. One other aspect that you can change for free is listen, let's say, a little bit louder than you normally do. Again, because it's gonna, the music's gonna reach you in literally in a different way. And if you already ordinarily listen pretty loud, take it down a couple of notches. Listen more quietly so that you have to listen, you know, listen forward, listen into it if it's not hitting you so hard by turning it down. Again, your relationship to the music and the sound will be different, which is what we're striving for here. If you are lucky enough to have an audiophile friend in the vicinity, in your neighborhood or town or city or something, uh, try swapping out some of each other's system. In other words, you exchange speakers or amplifiers or preamps or interconnect cables, something. You're swapping parts of the system back and forth. And this really could be, let's say, a mind-expanding experience, especially if you admire, <laughs> hopefully you do, you admire your friend's system and to hear parts of his system, or maybe the whole thing, 
you know, different environment, namely your listening room, that what you would learn from that could prove very, very interesting. So you may have you may have picked up at this point that I'm not recommending that you go out and you know buy stuff or upgrade or something like that to get better sound, to chase better sound. We've all been there. We've all done it way too much. And a lot of the time we've come to regret those, those aspects of the chase. And sometimes it's a, it was a learning experience. But to chase better sound by spending more money or throw, if you're rich enough, throwing more money at it because, oh, if I spend more, it's going to be incredible. I urge you not to do that for certainly as long as possible, right? Explore other avenues of audiophile bliss before you start to throw money at it. And, you know, of course, you know that uh, this one, I'm sorry, I have to keep repeating it all the time, but it's just such a satisfying recommendation. And that is for free experiment with if you have to be obsessing about sound quality uh, experiment with speaker placement in your room move your speakers please out into the room if they are a foot or less away from the wall behind them just for me just for the audiophiliac try on a very temporary basis pull them two feet out of the room or if you're feeling daring three feet out into the room just to see what that does, even if you can't live with it that way, unless they're extremely heavy or something, maybe you'll just want to move them out when you're really listening and push them back when you're not. Anyway, it's, an, it's, so, it's such a mind-altering experience to hear your speakers, hear your system in this different way. And by the way, yes, it's free, other than the time it takes to do it. So yes, experiment with speaker placement. And the other experiment you can do regarding placement which is in some ways even easier, and that is you move relative to the speakers. In other words, getting closer to them, which at some point will become near field listening, which I do recommend experimenting with and living with if you can, or moving further away from the speakers. Yeah, that makes at least as much of a difference as actually moving the speakers relative to the wall. So try both <laughs> separately. But anyway, all of that is actually fun. It's time consuming, but I find it can be really a lot of fun and extremely rewarding because you're gonna hear your sound in a very different and possibly better way. Another thing I want you to consider is uh, recalibrating your ears, so to speak, by listening to live music. Whatever genres turn you on, whatever genres are available to you and not too expensive, yes, just to hear music again in a different way and how how the, how you react to live music. Now, as I'm saying these words, I will tell you that that's not going to be true for everyone and it's not true for me. I don't I'm not one of those audiophiles that claims that live music is the standard and that's the thing. No, I'm less and less do I listen to go to concerts and stuff. I still do, but less and less. So, it's not like you have to. I'm not trying to guilt trip you into going to listen to live music if that's not your uh, bag. Here's another very important tip, and this follows the live music recommendation. Uh, get yourself some really high quality hearing protection. Yes, it's very important because if you start to lose your hearing, you will be a very unhappy audiophile. This whole thing today is about making you a happier audiophile. But seriously, the Edemotic Eddy plugs, you can buy them in many places, including Amazon. I don't know the current price, but they're usually about $13 a pair. And if you're really serious about protecting your hearing over the long term, and not just for concerts, but you know, lawnmowers and snowblowers, I mean, anytime you're, or sports events, which can be even louder than rock shows, you should, you should always have hearing protection in your pocket and I absolutely do and I would recommend because I've been using them for years custom molded to your ears hearing plugs they're soft rubbery uh, material they're not hard plastic they're extremely comfortable but they really do an amazing job blocking out loud noise so I think I've given you I think I've given you my best my best ideas about how to be a happier more satisfied, a content audiophile, content with what you have, enjoying the music and the system that you already have. I was gonna say, live happily ever after. Well, maybe not that, but in any case, enjoy the music.
That's, that's what this is all about. And uh, if you guys have any ideas of your own, how to be a happier, more contented, more satisfied audiophile, please tell us all about your ideas in the comments below this video. I would very much appreciate that. Oh, and now I have to do a little plug for myself. Actually, me and Herb, we are going to be at the audio show Axpona this coming weekend, uh, which is the 12th, the 13th, and 14th of April and Herb and I are going to be doing a live show and if you could join us live that would be the best. Yes, it's called the Expona Show. I will link to the show directly below this video and that would be fantastic and if you're at the show, if any of you guys are at the show with the live thing or just at the show and you see me in the halls and I'm not too uh, busy doing something, please say hi. And uh, what else? Oh, well now we're going to do the audiophiliac viewer systems, multiple systems of the day. Three, maybe four. Anyway, coming up right now. Marcus sent this one in, and he has a pair of Magico A5 speakers, Macintosh C52, and MC312 electronics. The reel to reel is a fully restored Revox PR99 Mark II. Turntable is by Michelle Engineering with an SME4 tone arm, clear audio Maestro V2 ebony cartridge, or render N10 streamer, all on a core audio Plycraft 3L rack. And then there's a custom turntable shelf. Thanks, Marcus. These pictures come to us from Dan. He lives in a house by the sea in Ferrydale, Wales, in the UK. Now his turntable caught my eye. It's a Riga Planer 2. That's a vintage one with the wooden trim around the edge with an upgraded platter and an RB300 tone arm. With cartridge is Audio-Technica ATVM95. And the phono preamp is a Musical Fidelity LX2 with a linear power supply. Oh, there's also an Oppo BDP83 for DVDs and CD transport. The TIAC AI, I think that's AI, uh, 503A is the preamp and the DAC for the system. He also occasionally uses a Chord Mojo 2 as a DAC. The amplifier is a Chord SPM 1900. The speakers, those look familiar, those are ELAC Unify Reference. Now this is interesting. This comes from River Castaneda. He is a 24-year-old sound system designer who lives here in Brooklyn. But this is a system that he built in San Francisco. There are those two Alltech A7 speakers. Those are movie theater speakers. And two sets of electronics. There's a Pioneer M22 Class A amplifier and also the Pioneer C21 preamplifier. Then there's those rather large Pisvane 845 monoblock amplifiers. Anyway, I don't really understand the system, but whatever it is, it looks really cool. And yikes, having movie theater speakers in your listening room is very, very special. Next up is Tom's system. He lives in Boise, Idaho. His amplifier is the Peachtree GAN 400. The preamp is a Rogue Audio RP1. CD player, Marantz 6007. The DAC is a Denifreps Pontus II. Then there's a Lumen U1 Mini. I think that's a streamer. And the turntable is a Fluence RT81. Oh, and those really big speakers, those are Tecton Double Impact. <laughs> okay, we are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg. Thank you so much for being here, watching this far into the video. Uh, if you dig, what I'm doing here on the channel with viewer systems of the day, with my chats with Herb and thought pieces like today's show, and of course reviews and interviews, please consider joining my Patreon to do so. Super easy to do. The address to the website is on the screen right now. You can join and help support this channel with just a couple of bucks a month up to and including 50 or even a hundred dollars a month. And in the top two tiers, you and I will have a conversation every month at the beginning of the month. 
and I really do enjoy having these conversations. This has been going on for years now of me doing this, and it never gets old. It's a fantastic thing. But anyway, if you can support the channel through the Patreon, that would be fantastic. And if you have yet to subscribe to this channel, sure, please do that. We just hit 250,000, actually 251,000 subscribers. And if you like a given video, please remember to hit the like button, the thumbs up button, the algorithm. Yeah, I'm here for the algorithm. Anyway, the algorithm likes those appreciations. And with that, I can say, yeah, my work here is 100% complete. Thank you again for watching. I really, really do hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.